Remember all the stuff you learned in the last three questions? Remember how you took that equation apart and you figure out a graph based on those parts. Now we're going to do the reverse. I'm going to give you the graph and I'm going to ask you to figure out the equation. Now, here's the most important thing though, right here. Boom, boom, boom. Since the vertical stretch, right, can't be determined directly. You can't figure out that A term in front. There's no way that you can figure out that A term just by looking at this graph. So what you got to do is you're going to put an A in there. You're going to end up having to solve for that A and determine the stretch factor, the vertical stretch factor. Now I know what you're saying. Oh my God, yeah, this sounds like a heck of a lot of work. Not really. Not really. Not if you're smart and you're playing with all of the things that you learned already. Case in point. Look at that. There's your na 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 na. Yes, you know it, and I know it. There's your asymptote, and one of your asymptotes is at negative two, but you have another asymptote right here. That one's at positive two. So, what are the equations that go with this? Think about it. The partial equation that goes with this is x plus two for this one, and x minus two for this one. And where do those vertical asymptotes equations go? They go on the denominator. Yes. Is there a point of discontinuity on this particular question? Think about it. There's no holes here. So guess what? There is no point of discontinuity. There is no partial equation that goes with that. Excellent. Do you remember what the y or the x-intercept does? Do you remember the x-intercept? You've got an x-intercept right here at negative 4, but you also have an x-intercept here at positive 1. Do you remember what those are all about? Yeah, those go in your numerator. So think of what the equation is for this. That would be x plus 4 and x minus 1. Those go in your numerator. Now, here we go. What's with the y-intercept? Y-intercept is easy. The y-intercept, if you think about it, is at minus 2. Okay? There is no equation that goes with this, but that's what's going to help us determine the a value. Okay. So with all of that said, look at the partial equations that you have. Okay? Ones that go in the numerator, ones that go in the denominator. So think about it. You're going to have some sort of equation, y equals 2. You're going to have the numerator and the denominator. So in the numerator, you're going to have x minus 4, x, or sorry, x plus 4, x minus 1. In the denominator, you're of course going to have this x plus 2, x minus 2. There's your non-permissible values, right? Okay. Now, remember at the beginning, I said you have to include the stretch factor, some sort of A value. So let's just put an A right up front. Now, that's our partial equation. But let's think about this for a second. This is where the y-intercept comes into play, right here. That's super huge important. Think about what a y-intercept is. All the values of x are 0, the y equals to minus 2. So look what happens to this equation. This equation is really cool. This y now becomes minus 2. This x becomes 0. That x becomes 0. That x becomes 0. That x becomes 0. Look how easy this is. So, rewriting this, minus 2 equals 2. 4 times the minus 1, that's minus 4, over 2 times minus 2, which is also minus 4. And don't forget that a value. That was right here. So there's the a value. So if you think about it, this is minus 2 equals, well, minus 4 over minus 4 is 1, 1a. One so there's your a value. Your a value, in fact, is minus 2. So what is your equation then? Oh, well, y equals 2. There's the a value of minus 2. Okay? There's your numerator of x plus 4, x minus 1. There's your denominator of x plus 2, x minus 2. Now, depending on the question, it may ask you to expand that out. Oh, boy, if you knew FOIL, you could do it. <laughs> of course you know FOIL. So you can expand this out all you want. Now, what I want to do is I want to punch this into the calculator. And I want to see if we actually get that graph that we have on the left there. So punching that value in, let's go with our alpha 1. And let's see if we can put a numerator denominator in there. Our numerator is going to be, of course, it's going to be minus 2, bracket. You're going to have your x plus 4. Where are you? There we go. Your x minus 1. Ooh, x minus 1. 
And in your denominator, you're going to have your x plus 2, x minus 2. x plus 2, x minus 2. And I hope we have a decent looking graph here. And I'm just going to go zoom standard just to be sure. And rup, rup, and rup, exactly what we had written right there. Now, isn't that pretty? Everything works out just beautifully. The equation looks exactly like the graph. And nice thing about your graphing calculator is you've got an actual graphed, graphed graph that you can compare with.